Isn't that just pretty? Look at how that late afternoon sun is filtering through on my south side. Welcome. Thank you for clicking on the video. Let's continue with the tour of the grow areas at this late stage of the season. It is the 1st of November today. Pinch punch is the first of the month and no return. Okay, we're going to go up. My only two things I have here is my voice. That might work against me and the light. But we'll do our best. I wanted to show you what is going on. I have moved my Chrysnetia up here. The Vanda Vietnamica because I'm hoping that I can trigger some blooms. Maybe not this season but it must need more light to bloom, I guess. And then I have that no ID Oncidium back there. It's just maturing its new growth. And I have my Brassavola Digbiana right here. The two new growths are coming on a treat. I hope that is super visible because this orchid deserves to be featured, it's hardly seen, and yet it's one of my favorites as well. Love it. I can see that we're going to have some size matches. This one's a bit bigger. Maybe I'll get two blooms this year. Only one growth bloomed last year. But yep, they're coming on a treat, and I'm very pleased because they started very late in the season. For an orchid that likes it hot, this is not a good time to be maturing growth but they're doing really nicely. The orange nuggets are back here. Next year, they will be treated just like all my other orchids. They will be out of isolation. We'll push the new growth on of the season in normal fashion. It's a long way off blooming, in my opinion, even though there looks like to be a shadow in there. They don't bloom until approximately uh, February, March, around that time. And here is one non-bloomer, but look at this, look at this orchid. Look at her. This is um, my Uculata cross with Lelia purpurata. And look, she's gorgeous. Growing really well. Always giving me wonderful, wonderful sized growth. And I have never had the fortune to see her bloom. And I don't know what I'm doing. She's right up here, south side, in a lot, a lot of light. Today I could take the curtain back a bit because it wasn't that intense, but I have never ever gotten her to bloom. And she's growing another new growth. So what is going on? Why is she not blooming? I have no idea. It's definitely not because she's small. I mean, look at the last growth. It's fabulous. No blooms. But she's a keeper anyway because she doesn't take up much space. I love this kind of structure. And then here is my No ID Zygopetalum. Also up on the top shelf. Lots and lots of light. I'd like to see if I can get something to bloom. Let me turn her around. Did I just touch something in there? No, that's just a leaf. Oh well, it was a rescue at some point in time. It's now fully established in the Lekka. And yeah, let's see, more light. I'm going to leave it outside this year and the colder temperatures will trigger something. And look at Maxima. Maybe I should cover the sunlight. Look at Maxima. New roots, a sight to behold. So happy, new roots, new pot, cleaned up, perfect. But you can see that the repot that we did has stressed out the first growth of the season. It is shriveled, which is a shame. So I'm going to take note that that is going to be a case. And with regards to timing of the roots, we're OK. Nothing's going to happen. It'll be all right. But if I had left it, maybe three weeks longer, it would have probably served the orchid much better. But she's going to be okay. 
the sheaths haven't exactly swollen up. There is a shadow, but that's what she does, a sheath within a sheath. And I wonder if I'm even going to see any blooms this year. This one feels a lot chubbier. Maybe only one growth will bloom. I don't know. This one dried up, but that's okay. She will, dry, she will also bloom from a dried up sheath. So I'm not concerned. I've got a healthy orchid and um, we'll see when she does what she does. But when it comes to blooming, she's late. So we shall just wait and see. And here is a Memoria Krista Erdmann, which was a gift from Luca at some point. I didn't have much going on with this orchid this year. Just one new growth. Doesn't look like anything is gonna be happening bloom wise. And I took the leaves off of this growth last year when it arrived because they looked really dodgy. So I don't know if that's going to bloom, but I'd rather remove the leaves and have a bare cane than some really funky looking leaves that I'm not sure what they are on about. And here's my Yokosuka story that we divided, bringing out another new growth down here already. There, fantastic. So she got the radical root treatment, got divided, but is now pot bound again. This is awesome. Perfect. And a new growth already. A sheath up on the top. So eventually there'll be some goodness coming out of there. Yokosuka story is in a lot of light back here in the corner. And then I have my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum right here. New growth, I'm trying to train it to go this way. That's where the light is. There, I need, I would prefer this orchid to have a cascading effect like on one side of the orchid and not start to get all sprawled out. Hmm. It's not responding to my training. But I have three new growths coming on the Parkinsonianum and I'm really pleased about that. Sorry for the shakiness at times. And I'm going to pan you slowly over to where the Tolumnias live against the trellis there. I have one, two big spikes coming. You can see one on the left there. And there's another chubby one <coughs> right down. Where are you? Oh, <laughs> right down there. And one spike I lost because it was growing through the back and the bumping of the baskets against the trellis on a windy day smushed that spike. So I wasn't even aware it was coming. So I lost that spike, but maybe another fan will grow another spike. I had this one actually do really well this year. So maybe it'll give me an, another spike. We shall see. For now, they're still outside. Not happy with the progress of that one over there. And you can see the gaps. I have pulled three already because I was not happy with them either. So they're already being babied indoors um, with the exception of one. I don't know if I'm going to keep them, if they're going to make it. And they, they grew new growths, but they just don't look right. They look even sorrier than that one there. <laughs> so I don't know, we'll see. They're already in the dining area. Lusneri has finished blooming. It's just chilling out here now. I'm giving it, I'm dunking it in water every second day now, just to make sure that it gets some kind of a little bit of a dry spell and it's colder at night. So I don't do the radical submerging all the way to the crown anymore. And then here to the right, got the tortilla jungle going on. This is where tortilla will live, permanent space and we'll see what happens next year. And I have my Zygonesia right here, also doing okay. Very slow in developing the new growth here. And this is the one from the orchid room. I can't take the tag out. I'll put a pop-up from the orchid room, but she sent me 
this gorgeous orchid where the two new growths had matured. This one has matured and the one in the back and it's already now sending out another one from this new growth here. Very pleased about how quickly this orchid acclimated here. Very happy about that. It's pot bound as well. And the little bane of this season has been Zydenfidenia mitrata. Roots try, stop and go, stop and grow, and then stop again. Even though it's in this very moisture, high humidity environment. Yeah, I'm not happy. Maybe it just needs more time. I don't know. It only has this one new growth coming. And it has a new root. But that root tip is nothing in compared. The root tip should be like three times the length if it was going to amount to anything. Yeah. Little Zydenfadenia mitrata. Not too pleased about it. But I'm not moving it around. I'm just leaving it be. Eventually, when it's time to bring it in, I will leave it inside. I will not be moving it back and forth. It'll just go into a very highlight area by the glass. So we've seen the mounts recently. And that's all same status quo. My Sophronites will get to that just now. I just want to make sure I am slow with my panning. And let's go down to the next level where I have my Chantilly lace and Cerula, Lobata Cerula in the back there. But I'm going to have to move a few things. So the Cattleya Lobata there, it's growing the second new growth for me here, which is amazing for this year. Bought it as a seedling a while ago and was very slow to get going, but now we're picking up pace. And I'm really, really pleased about that because this growth matured, this growth here matured this year and then immediately sent out another new growth. And it is a stonker as well. It's a big one because look at where that sheath is going all the way up there. So the progress, I'm really, really happy about that progress. That's so good to see. I'm not saying that it's near blooming size by any means, but to see that size jump, it was always so, so encouraging. Chantilly lace is also throwing out a new growth. It's going to be a little bit of a smaller one than it normally would be. This was the growth that started at the beginning of the season, but for once, for once, it did not abort the next new growth. I've had this one struggling for years with me, where it would always abort a growth, start another one, abort, and then start, and that would be this one. Otherwise, I would have had two new growths this year. But this new growth is coming along really well. Very happy to see that. And my Velotina is not doing anything at all since it matured this new growth, and that was oh, four months ago. So it's just there, chilling out, doing its thing, not taking up any space. I was hoping to see another growth already during this growing season, but hey ho, we wait. And here's the magic one that got flooded from the rain and I didn't realize the angle of the rain had filled the pot. It looks to me she's going to be okay. There is no, no negative consequences. I don't see anything bad. The roots look the same. There is no browning of the roots at all. So they're okay. We got away with that one. Thank goodness for that. And here's the Falcata Setsuzan, already living outside. I don't have a problem with that one, but Shuteno, I do, because I put Dragon's Blood down the center there, and I think um, I lost the growing point here, as well as here. So there was a bit too much spraying going on. I was a little bit too radical and I didn't calculate the temperatures correctly and got there too late. Anyway, let's see if the dragon's blood did the trick and the orchid doesn't go downhill. But maybe by now I will have forfeited any kind of new spikes for next year because now she might decide to throw out new fans instead. As long as she lives, I'm cool with that. And here's Atro Walker 
doing nothing since the last time we saw her. I have the um, moss here growing around. I've taken it off the base. I don't need that anymore. But at least this year, the Atro Walker has shown signs of recovery. And it was a very setback orchid for over a year. And now we at least have a tiny new growth and another tiny new growth back there, which actually produced some good roots. And this orchid is a little bit more robust. I don't mind if I lose these leaves. They've done their job. They've tidied the orchid over really well. And it's okay if they go. Now we have roots in the pot. We're, we're in the right direction. And then down here is my Renantanda Sunrise. Never bloomed for me either, so next growing season, it's going to go to the east side where there's gonna be a lot more light and heat. I've been very protective of this orchid simply because it goes red so quickly. And the same with my Ascacentrum Ampuyathea. Has a beautiful green color now, but it didn't bloom. Same thing, it goes uh, very red, very quickly. And I think that's the color it will need in order for it to bloom. Having said that, it's also been a good year because not blooming gave it a rest and it's created some beautiful new structures here, created some gorgeous roots that I can fall back on in case I mess this orchid up. And I'm actually not disappointed that it didn't bloom because this, this is what I like to see. A nice crown, healthy, growing strong. We'll see her again next year because then she's gonna get the light. And my Pandorata lives down here for now. Still gets quite a bit of light, now a little bit more direct sun. And eventually she will be living inside as well. Then when I pan to the left here, I have my Zorbinicofia Humbertiana back there. You can see the root we were seeing the other time, the last tour. It's now coming out of the pot and doing its thing wherever it wants to go. And I've actually seen another root, but it stopped growing. But there's a root right there. You can see the little tip thing. That didn't push through, continue growing. So that's the second root coming from this side of the orchid. And we had another one that was actually directed towards the tag in the back that I haven't seen either for a long time. But I did manipulate this orchid a lot this summer, trying to get it right. And in the orchid top, I'm sure it's gonna be okay, especially seeing as this root here is, is a new root. It wasn't when we potted it up in the orchid top. And my new little Dawiana, variety aurea, that I decided to pot up, even though I said I would wait. I made my decision, checked my checklist, and I said, this is it, this is what we're going to do. New roots coming, perfect, very pleased, very pleased. And then there's something I've always wanted in my collection, and these are tiny. This is a Leopoldii, one piece. This is my third piece, because I'm always dubious about the other two. And it's done, I would say, nothing that I can see, except possibly worked on its root system in the pot. It's a little bit pot-bound from when we cleaned it up and potted it up at the beginning of the season. It is in the pot now. I don't have to worry about it not having rooted in, but I want a Leopoldia in my collection that thrives. But these little guys, they are taking their time. So hopefully, hopefully next year, it will have acclimated and said, okay, I'm willing to grow. My Labukensis. Ah, oh, Parapalonopsis Labukensis. Yes, very slow grower for me, no complaints but I have lost a root tip that I can see inside the pot and you can see it right there. That's gone black and I don't know why. I mean, I can say it's the dry layer of the lecker, but I can also say that I keep that lecker moist, especially that area now. Maybe I kept it too moist. Anyway, at least it's growing. At least there is some root structure in there. 
so we'll keep hoping. It's a very slow grower for me. And then this is my cat Leah Tenuis. Also, it's just been busy in the root department. Matured this one new growth here this season, and that's fine. That was just sphagnum moss, thank goodness. But nothing else since then, except for nice roots growing into the pot there. That's all we can ask for. Just keep rooting in. The more roots, the better. And here I have the Gold Coast that has finished blooming. Sorry about that. So now it's just in rest mode. It has done its thing for the season. And very grateful for that. So that lives down here now. If it were to ever rain again, I'm very mindful of this corner. And I've got Tetragonum. It's getting a bit crowded here. Tetragronum is chilling out in this corner here with its long new growth where it gets late afternoon sun and some direct early morning sun as well. And Peggy Ruth Carpenter is just going nuts. Now I've got three spikes opening all at once. One, two here, and three. <laughs> and there's a few more to come because Last I counted was 10, but I found another one, making it 11. There's another one there. Yes, more pepper fragrance. Why not? My little Gold Coast is still doing all right. I had expected it to last a little bit longer on the bloom front, but that's okay. Eventually, I want to repot this as well, divide it and the piece will go to Holland. Very fitting with the color. All right, I'm going to pan over slowly. And here's the Prostechia, that I call Lancifolium, but it is not, it's supposedly a Cochleata. All the new growths of the season have matured, and it's also produced an additional new growth as a little straggler. Here's the other Leopoldii, the little pieces. This is the new growth I can show for for this year. And this is the new growth I can show for for the other piece. I'm trying to get them to do something on the root front. They are, this one, this piece at least has grown some roots. And I'm very careful to keep that one going. And some have gone in the pot. I can't see what's going on with this one on this side, but these two growths are patetico. There is nothing there that would tell me that this is actually going to be a substantial orchid anytime soon. Very weak orchids, very weak pieces from this nursery. Yep. Moving on, we've got Holdenii in the back. And we've got over there my Neostylus. Blue Sneery Blue that was decapitated from its other piece and put into self-watering. It's fully rooted in. And in the back, let's see, angle-wise, eh, there you can see it's going, growing a spike. And now it's going to be interesting to see if that spike will amount to anything and not be something distorted and weird looking. That was the whole point of the exercise is to see what is going on with this orchid and why was I getting year after year, spike after spike of weirdness? This is my moss comb and I thought I had nailed, but even once the mature, the growth had matured, it got too much sun. I have to be super careful with this orchid. I don't, I don't understand. I can understand burning the new growths when they're little, like I did here. And then I got two new growths coming and they were super clean until one day too much and I can't get it to bloom. So I've got two sheaths in there, but I can't get it to bloom. And that's the whole point of this exercise to a degree, right? And then if I go slowly, this is my little green light. 
Oh, gorgeous. Let me just take it aside. And here's the Kaularthron by Cornutum doing really well. Next year, we can start pushing it to be what it needs to be size-wise for an orchid. And then that is my Lelia Vage, Pacavia Vage. The new growths have matured beautifully. We repotted this one as well in a radical repot and gave it a new bigger pot and it's pot bound again already. It's a beast. So beast mode, fine. Now it should please produce some flowers at some point. It's big enough now, it gets plenty of light. This is where it lives all summer and all into the fall until it's too cold to leave outside. So light is not a problem. My Luminosa has finally come onto its own. This was the year that was very, very important in order for this sorry little cut here to actually make it. But it is perfect now, it's rooted in. And this growth, although be it slow, is gorgeous. I'm very happy about this orchid, not struggling anymore. And in the back, I have Cattleya Schilleriana, has also finally gotten into the groove of this setup. I have three new growths this year, and the biggest one is this one right here. Not quite yet the size of what I would expect leaf-wise to get it to bloom, but three new growths, three times new roots in the pot. She is fabulous on her way now. And this one, this Dinard Blue Heaven, oh my goodness, the fragrance. Oh, it is now not the old cinnamon powder smell, it is now a cinnamon syrup smell, an additive you would add into cookies. I, it's just incredible. While I'm stood here talking, I'm so distracted. And I'm just going to finish with this shelf here because it's going to be too long a video. We'll continue with the other areas in the next video. But here's my uh, intermediate. And this sheath looks like there's something inside, but that's not progressing. <coughs> I'm sorry, but that is not progressing quickly. But that is a good sign. Ah, very, very excited to see if this one will bloom this on this cycle. I have not the other growth still down there and it doesn't look like it's moving fast at all. Meanwhile, who is this time of year as things get colder? <laughs> and then here in the back, I have my Brassavola Cordata Hinsing, and it is in sheath, in bud. There will be blooms. Very, very pleased. This was also a very, very pathetic cut from this nursery here. And yeah, but we have gotten it to bloom twice now, and it's going coming back in. Very pleased against all odds. And then my citrina over here, excuse me. This is my Renanthera citrina. Still trying to train her to get a little less kinked on, on the apex there, but working on it very slowly. I lost five leaves at the bottom quite quickly. Had me a bit concerned. Sorry about that. The picky is getting in the way. Had me a bit concerned. Five leaves in succession. But she's okay. I don't feel any mushiness. I don't feel any anything that, that would alarm me. I said that about my Mona Chica that I lost earlier this year. But um, no, she's looking okay. And if there's anything, I've got lots and lots of roots to fall back on. I'd rather not, but you know. So yes, oh my goodness. I was going to do like what you call a quick tour and it would turn into a long tour. So I'm just going to 
at this point sign off and remember my spot. Oh, you're, you're beautiful with the sun there. You're all beautiful. Ah, and I'm distracted again. So instead of making this too long, we'll do it in two halves. And I will say thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about any of the orchids I've shown you that I haven't gone into with a lot more detail that you would like, please let me know. I'll be very happy to focus on that orchid or orchids in a separate video and we'll look at them a little bit closer. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.